welcome. My name is Ray Tanzen, and this is Beers with the Beard. Uh, one of the things we do on this channel is talk about AVB and audio networking. It's one of the big passions that I have, and I'm really excited to talk about it. I love talking about it. I can go on days and days and days. Um, but today, we're going to talk about using AVB with Apple computers. Uh, so if you haven't already, hit subscribe, hit the alerts, hit like on this video so that we can continue to push out more content to you and uh, share some knowledge back and forth. Ask your questions in the comments, and I'll do my best to answer them. Uh, so in this video, we're talking about Apple computers and AVB. So as you may or may not know, Apple actually supports AVB in their operating system and on their hardware. They've been doing it for some time now. Uh, directly in their operating system, they have an AVB AvDeck controller, uh, which is a fancy way of saying they've got this software that allows you to make connections and set up options on various AVB devices. And their hardware is all support AVB. Uh, essentially, if you have an Apple computer that has a Thunderbolt port on it, I think it's somewhere in maybe 2012 or later, uh, then you have hardware that's compatible with it also. So on that subject, it's a couple of notes. Um, if you have one of these compatible Mac computers uh, and it has an Ethernet port on it, it just works. Plug in that Ethernet port, that Ethernet port's going to work. However, if you have a newer uh, Apple laptop that does not have built-in Ethernet, uh, then you'll have to use an adapter, and you've got to be selective of what you use. So, for example, in uh, my setup here today, I'm using an Apple DisplayPort. It's connected up with my Mac computer. I've got a newer one that only has the Thunderbolt 3 ports on it, so I'm using a Thunderbolt 3 to Thunderbolt 2 dongle, and then that is connected up to my uh, Apple Display, uh, which has an Ethernet jack on it, so that Ethernet jack is AVB compatible. Um, if you have Thunderbolt 2 jacks, but not an Ethernet jack, you can use the uh, Thunderbolt 2 to gigabit Ethernet adapter, and that will work as an AVB compatible device. Uh, but if your computer like mine only has the Thunderbolt 3 jacks, you have to double up on the dongles. You'll have to go from the Thunderbolt 3 to Thunderbolt 2 dongle to the Thunderbolt 2 to gigabit Ethernet dongle to get AVB compatibility. Uh, the dongle that's USB 3 to uh, the Ethernet will not work. That's not an AVB compatible dongle. That's just a USB. It's not the gigabit. It, it, it just It's not going to work. You need to get uh, the gigabit one to work. So there's a couple of things that you have to do to set it up. So by default, you can use an AVB device as an audio interface with your computer. Uh, it will show up in your audio MIDI setup. It will show up as an audio device on your computer. Uh, but as of this video, uh, Apple uses a function called Acquire, which is one of these AVB uh, pieces called Acquire to do that. And what that means is the Apple computer and your AVB device lock together uh, and don't allow any AVB connections to any other AVB devices on the network. They acquire each other and that's it. Uh, but there is a way to turn your computer into an AVB endpoint so that you can use it freely with multiple AVB devices on the network. So that's what I'm going to show you today. Uh, so let's jump right over and we'll take a look at that on the computer. So you'll see here I've got uh, three different things open. First, I've got my audio MIDI setup open. And this is so you can see I've got my Studio Life 64S. So if I were just to use that here, it would be working in that acquire mode. Um, but I don't want to do that. Uh, I also have the terminal open. If I use the terminal, I can actually open a Apple's uh, AVB uh, AvDeck controller uh, by using the command AVB util space dash dash controller. And that would open it. Uh, but also, if you have the Personas Universe control software, uh, if you go into settings here and go to AVB audio configuration, it will launch the Apple AvDeck controller. So by default, you're going to be in this AvDeck entity controller window, and you'll see the 64S here and all of the settings that are available for it. Uh, so to get my Mac computer to be able to behave as an endpoint on the network, the first thing I need to do is go into this simple virtual audio configuration. So here, you'll see uh, a list of all of the e compatible Ethernet ports on your computer. Right now, I just have the one. It's my display Ethernet. So if I check that box, it's going to enable this as an AVB endpoint. So now if I close this window and go back to my AvDeck Entity Controller, you'll see now I have my MacBook Pro listed as a device. So there's a couple of things you're going to need to do here, though. We want to make sure that it's configured correctly to be compatible with my other AVB devices. 
So the first thing I want to do is get my current configuration set up. And there's a variety of different options. There's eight channel per streams going from eight by eight all the way up to 64 by 64, uh, 16 channels per stream, 32 channels per stream. I'm going to be connecting up with uh, the Persona 64S. And I know that's eight channels per stream. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and choose the 64 by 64, eight channels per stream. The next thing that you're going to want to make sure you're paying attention to is this uh, Mac system clock, your domain clock. And so by default, it's going to clock internally. If it's going to clock internally, that means that your Mac computer is going to be the clock master. Uh, you can also choose to clock off of the incoming audio stream, uh, one through eight, because I've set up eight streams, or a dedicated media clock stream. Uh, if you are going to leave it as the uh, Mac system clock, it means you're going to have to make sure that your other AVB devices are set to clock off of their network uh, connection from the Mac computer to make sure that you have sync. Otherwise, you can have them set to internal and have the Mac sync off of one of its streams coming in from that device. Uh, the second thing you need to do is make sure that your audio streams are connect set up in this right format. So if you take a look here, there's a variety of different formats that Apple supports. Now, uh, it probably will default to this one here, which is an AAF format. But I know that as of this video, Personas is using one of the IEC formats. Uh, they're using the uh, IEC 24-bit. Uh, I've set a 48K, and it's the non-blocking. Uh, so I'm going to choose that as my stream format. And so you've got to go down and do that on each stream to make sure that it is set up correctly. That one's already set up for me. Um, so I'm going to go and just change each one of these to make sure that I'm sending and receiving a compatible stream format. And again, I know that uh, the Persona stream format is this first one here. So by going in and changing all of these formats to that, I know that I'm going to ensure my Mac computer and the way that it is sending and receiving audio is being done in a way that is compatible with the Studio Live 64S. All right, so now that I have set up all of my audio formats and stream formats correctly, the next thing I want to do is to go into my connection matrix to establish some connections. So I'm going to open up the AVDEC connection matrix here. And now you'll see I have my Mac computer and my 64S. So the top row here, that's all your sends, and then the side here is all your receives. Think of it like a rain gutter. Rain comes down, and it goes out across to uh, the bottom here, so in and out. And so I can now freely route any of my sends from my 64S into my computer and things out of my computer out to my 64S. So you'll notice that uh, some of these blocks are purple. Uh, that means my 64S has actually subscribed to some uh, talker streams previously. Uh, that talker is not available right now. In this particular case, I had some stage boxes set up. Uh, and so the Apple uh, AvDeck controller is warning me that there is already something subscribed there. So if you set up a connection there, uh, it's going to uh, overwrite what you have and, it, and could mess up something depending on if something might be offline on your system. But any of these green ones are ready to go. So so for example, if I take my 64S, I route it here to my MacBook. So now my AVB sends one through eight, which happen to be channels one through eight by default of my mixer, are going into my MacBooks uh, one through eight here. All right, so now once that is all set up and established, the next thing you want to do is make sure that you are selecting the right audio interface in your application. So if I go back now to my auto, audio media setup, now in addition to this 64S that's here as an Ethernet audio interface, you'll see my actual Ethernet port. It actually says display Ethernet. So now this is available as an audio interface in my audio applications. So if I'm running, for example, Studio One, I can choose this as my audio interface, and that will be sending and receiving those AVB streams from what I had there. And there you have it. That is how you set up a Mac computer to be an endpoint on an AVB network.
And so now with it set up this way, I can freely route streams to multiple devices to and from on the network. Um, in this case here, I've got the Studio Live 64S. Uh, I usually have some stage boxes set up to it. And so this way I can use those stage boxes. I can use the 64S and I can still send and receive some streams to my computer. Uh, so that is it for today's video. We're going to be doing more videos on AVB, sharing our knowledge, answering questions. So again, make sure you hit subscribe, hit that alert button so you get notified when we have no videos go up and give me a like. All right. Thank you very much. Take care.